Welcome to another day of our daily scripture reading. Today we're going to be reading from the book of Enoch, chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4. Now, this is going to be a bit of a shorter video compared to my other videos because chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4 are actually very short chapters in the book of Enoch. Let's get right into this. Enoch chapter 2. Enoch says, Observe ye everything that takes place in the heaven, how they do not change their orbits, and the luminaries which are in the heaven, how they all rise and set in order in each in its season, and transgress not against their appointed order. Here Enoch is really just uh, encouraging us to consider how God made the universe, okay? Where it says here, you know, observe everything that takes place in the heaven. He's talking about the heaven as we know of as like the universe, okay? The uh, space, you know, we're talking about the planets and such. And he says how they do not change their orbits. Notice here how Enoch, in his allegedly primitive state, acknowledged that there were heavenly bodies, as in planets and such, that have orbits, okay? Notice this word up here, orbits. And the luminaries which are in the heaven, the luminaries being the lights, such as the sun, the moon, and the stars, how they all rise and set in order, each in its season, and transgress not against their appointed order. Now he's just really just pointing out to us that see how Everything really has its order, its its appointed order and its orbit and how it doesn't, you know, the planets, the stars, you know, for the most part, they do not transgress their appointed order. In other words, you say, oh, the sun doesn't, you know, rise in the east and set in the west one day and rise in the north and set in the south another day. OK, so, I mean, he's just saying, look at how everything is so steadfast, how predictable, how they are. You know, they all, they all keep to the very paths that God has set for them. He says, Behold ye the earth, and give heed, or notice, uh, note, notice the things which take place upon it from first to last. How steadfast they are. Again, Enoch says, you know, that the things that happen, happen on earth here. Like, for example, um, I'll just take this. So far as to say, let's say, for example, the, the, the seasons, you know, the uh, spring, summer and fall and winter, you know, in other parts of the earth, we got the rainy season, we got the, the, the drier season. Now, how steadfast these are, you know, like we know that the sun is going to shine, or at least there's going to be light in the day and darkness at night. There are seasons, there are times appointed and how steadfast they are. In other words, these these things do not change. They, they obey their set order right to the T. How none of the things upon earth change, but all the works of God appear to you. Behold the summer and the winter, how the whole earth is filled with water and clouds and dew and rain lie upon it. Chapter 3. Observe and see how in the winter all the trees seem as though they had withered and shed their leaves, except fourteen trees, which do not lose their foliage, but retain the old foliage from two to three years till the new comes. Now, this is something that is, is actually very, very interesting here, that Enoch pointed out fourteen different species of trees that do not lose their foliage. Uh, evergreen trees, if you will. Now, I haven't really done personal studies and confirmation of this, but perhaps some of you might um, might want to comment about, you know, are there 14 different categories of trees that do exist on the earth that do not shed their leaves in the winter? Or at least, are there 14 different kinds or categories of trees that existed in the same area that Enoch lived, you know, in the Middle East? that do not lose their foliage in the winter. Very interesting uh, observation here that Enoch 
um, that Enoch has here. And he says that they keep their foliage two to three years to, till the new comes. Chapter 4. And again, observe ye the days of summer, how the sun is above the earth over against it. And you seek shade and shelter by reason of the heat of the sun. And the, and the earth also burns with, with growing heat. And so you cannot tread upon the earth or on a rock by reason of its heat. Again, talking about the blistering heat of summer and how the sun can shine on rocks and actually make them hot. And I'm sure a lot of you could actually um, testify to that and confirm that, that yeah, in the summer, the sun can actually shine upon parts of the earth and it would, it would be actually hot to tread upon. So, that's the gist of what we have today for our daily scripture reading. Tomorrow we're going to get into chapter 5, which is a lot more of a lengthy and more meaty chapter. And so I'm really looking forward to, uh, to getting, getting into this with you. So once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.